King Leonidas of Sparta is among the most famous warriors in history. Modern historians have described him as a supremely disciplined man of few words who had a body of steel, could endure any hardship, and would fight to his last breath. Perhaps one of his greatest achievements was the infamous Battle of Thermopylae, where he led 300 Spartans against hundreds of thousands of Persian soldiers. In today's video, we discover the real life of Leonidas, King of Sparta. Watch till the end to learn more about his life and legacy. King Leonidas I of Sparta was born around 540 BC in the city-state of Sparta. At the time of his birth, Sparta was already prominent among the Greek states. His father, Anaxandritus II, served as the 15th king of the Aegean lineage, reigning over Sparta for almost four decades, from approximately 560 BC to 520 BC. Alongside his co-king Ariston, Anaxandritus played a crucial role in Sparta's ascent to dominance among Greek city-states. The name of Leonidas's mother remains unknown. However, according to Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian, she was the niece of her husband, Anaxandritus. After several years of marriage without siring any heir, the powerful Spartan council of Ephors, second only to the kings in authority, urged Anaxandritus to divorce her and marry someone capable of bearing children. Anaxandritus resisted, and instead, the Ephors permitted him to take a second wife while maintaining his marriage to the first. The new wife bore him his first son, Cleomenes. Surprisingly, Anaxandritus' first wife, after her desired heir was secured by the second wife, gave birth to three sons in quick succession. Dorius, Leonidas, and Cleombrotus. Born into the Aegead dynasty, which descended from the legendary hero Heracles, Leonidas, as the third son of King Anaxandritus II, was not initially expected to ascend to the throne. Nevertheless, he eventually assumed kingship, becoming one of the most renowned figures in classical antiquity. Sparta occupied a strategic position on the Eurotas River, in the southeastern part of the Peloponnese, connected to the rest of Greece by the Isthmus of Corinth. Originally settled by the Achaeans, one of the major Greek ethnic groups during the early stages of Greek history, Sparta differed from other city-states by lacking proper urbanization and presenting itself more as a collection of villages. The central town of Sparta was divided into four villages, Mesoa, Pitana, Limne, and Sinosura, and, together with Amicle at the south, constituted the city-state of Sparta. In Greek society, warfare held paramount importance, defining the identity and civic rights of a citizen. All Greeks were obligated to serve in the military from the age of 20 to 45. Spartan society specifically adhered to a warrior ethos, separating boys of legitimate Spartan birth from their families at the age of seven for compulsory training in the agoge system. This rigorous system, overseen by young Spartan adults, groomed them into warriors. The only exception to this mandatory military training was the firstborn son of each city-state's king, who received specialized training focused on preparing him for future rule. Leonidas, being the third son of King Anaxandritus, was not in line for the throne, as his older half-brother Cleomenes held that position. Consequently, Leonidas dedicated his formative years to mastering the skills of a Spartan warrior. 
From ages 7 to 12, he underwent training under the supervision of a warden known as Pydominos, or Herder of Boys. By the age of 20, Leonidas had been shaped by Spartan society into an agile, disciplined, and battle-ready military force. Trained as a hoplite warrior, hoplites, experts in using short iron swords, round shields, and spears, fought in a tightly organized phalanx formation, using their shields to create a protective barrier against incoming arrows. As Leonidas prepared to embark on his military service, he received news of his father's death, leading to the ascension of his brother Cleomenes to the throne. While Cleomenes assumed the role of supreme ruler, Leonidas continued his commitment to the life of a Spartan warrior, living with his fellow soldiers in mess groups. Around this time, Leonidas married Gorgo, the daughter of his half-brother Cleomenes, a woman noted for her beauty and political acumen. By 490 BCE, Cleomenes, the reigning king, faced challenges as Grecian city-states succumbed to Persian invasions. In 491, Cleomenes attempted to overthrow a neighboring king, who considered submitting to the Persians. However, the people of Sparta disapproved of his plans, forcing Cleomenes to flee the city. Cleomenes, undeterred, assembled a formidable army in the surrounding territories. Although the Spartans eventually allowed his return, they deemed him insane. Leonidas had him placed under Helot slave class guard. Cleomenes, in a tragic turn, persuaded one of his captors to lend him a dagger, leading to a gruesome self-inflicted demise. Previously, at the time when Cleomenes ascended to the throne, Leonidas's older half-brother Dorius felt aggrieved at being bypassed. Dorius, unable to endure staying in Sparta, attempted to establish a colony in Africa. This venture proved unsuccessful, and he met an untimely death in Sicily. Leonidas found himself next in line for the throne. Upon assuming the throne, Leonidas found himself thrust into a critical moment as the Persian threat loomed over Greece. Xerxes, the Persian king, had amassed an immense force of over 1,200 warships and close to 2 million warriors, aiming to crush any resistance. In contrast, Greece struggled with disunity with only 31 out of over a hundred city-states joining forces under Spartan leadership. Xerxes, relying on numerical superiority, aimed to keep his naval fleet and infantry closely connected as they advanced through Macedonia and Thessaly. By around the end of 480 BCE, the Persian army had reached Thermopylae, a narrow pass between Thessaly and the ocean. Recognizing the impossibility of defeating the entire Persian force, Leonidas planned to inflict a devastating blow that would demoralize the Persians and force their withdrawal. However, the Oracle of Apollo at Delphi had forewarned of doom for the Spartans, casting doubt on Leonidas' strategy. Despite the oracle's ominous prophecy, Leonidas remained resolute, determined to defend his beloved city-state. Initially planning to withdraw to a defensible position where the Peloponnesian Peninsula meets Attica, Leonidas altered his strategy to engage the Persians at Thermopylae's narrowest point. This decision, though risking the safety of Athens, demonstrated Leonidas' commitment to face the overwhelming Persian force head-on. Against his instincts, Leonidas had led a chosen force of 300 Spartans, a strategic decision that carried symbolic and practical weight. The number 300, reminiscent of the regular royal bodyguard, was manageable for an elite task force. 
However, the mission appeared more of a suicide squad. The pass at Thermopylae featured a flat plain where the Persians were encamped, and the Spartans fortified a defensible location where the pass widened to 50 feet. Before the battle commenced, Xerxes demanded Leonidas surrender, to which the Spartan king defiantly replied, Malone Labe, which means, come and get them yourself. During the pre-battle pause, Persian spies observed unusual Spartan behavior, misinterpreting their calm preparations as fear-induced madness. In the first clash, the Spartans faced the Medes, but the confined space limited the Medes' numerical advantage. The Spartans effectively defended against arrows by lifting shields overhead. Despite Persian attempts, the Spartans, fighting in relays and employing feigned retreats, resisted fiercely. Xerxes, appalled at the heavy losses, eventually sent in the elite immortals, but they too failed to break through, suffering significant casualties. The narrow pass became a gruesome battlefield, with around 20,000 Persians falling to Greek resistance over two days. The demoralizing effect on the Persian army intensified as they struggled to comprehend why a small group of rebels could not be turned back. The Battle of Thermopylae unfolded as a testament to the Spartan determination and strategic brilliance under Leonidas' leadership. In a turn of tragic events, Xerxes received assistance from a Greek turncoat named Ephaltes, familiar with mountain paths, offering a way to bypass the Greek defense at Thermopylae. Ephaltes guided the Persian royal guard of immortals through a secret path, catching the Phaeacian guards by surprise. Leonidas, recognizing the peril, ordered most Greek forces to retreat, leaving the Spartans to face the Persians. As the conflict entered its third day, the Persians outflanked the Greeks, putting Leonidas in a pincer grip. Realizing the hopelessness of the situation, Leonidas gathered his remaining forces, ordered everyone except the Spartans to escape for the greater good. Displaying true Spartan valor, Leonidas allegedly remarked, This evening, we shall dine in Hades, foreshadowing the impending sacrifice. The Spartans fought fiercely, inflicting heavy losses on the Persians until the royal guard of immortals arrived. In a desperate last stand, Leonidas fought like a man possessed, and the Spartans, despite their battered state, fiercely protected his body. The Spartans, surrounded and outnumbered, resorted to throwing rocks at the Persians. Eventually, a barrage of arrows ended the valiant defense. Xerxes, recognizing the significance of the Spartans' heroic defense, ordered the decapitation and crucifixion of Leonidas' body. Despite attempts to conceal the true casualties, the Spartans' stand at Thermopylae became an indelible mark in history, inspiring Greek morale. This sacrifice bought crucial time for the Athenian Greek fleet to disrupt the Persian navy, ultimately leading to the defeat of the Persian threat. Leonidas and his fellow Spartans became symbols of courage and resilience against overwhelming odds.